I'm Eric. I'm the team lead for now, the team lead of ConvertRL, which is managing um, a product called ConvertRL. Um, it's, it's a team of seven, something like that, and I'm, yeah, God, this is frustrating. There we go. All right. So I'm going to be talking about how you can convert a system, right? And it's going to be primarily about CentOS. Um, so most of the systems that are similar to CentOS um, are based off of RHEL. So you have Alma, you have Rocky, you have uh, Oracle Linux, um, CentOS as well. CentOS Stream is actually upstream, so it doesn't really count. But that's what RHEL is based off of. So that's why it makes it quite easy to convert. So you have relatively simple process. Everything's basically the same. Uh, but when it comes to something like Debian, it's a lot more difficult because then you have to deal with a completely different like architecture and um, like ground, right? Because they're not similar in that way. Um, but converting is still difficult in a way. Like the actual process is easy, but there's always going to be some uh, like edge cases and other difficulties. So there's a few tools that people have developed over time. Um, I don't think Convertor was the first one. I think that was actually CentOS to Oracle Linux, if I'm, mis if I'm not correct, but yeah. Um, there's a few tools though. There's Elevate, which allows you to upgrade um, systems, so like from CentOS going to Alma, uh, some of that. They also have an Alma Linux deploy, which is actually converting from CentOS or uh, CentOS Stream to over to Alma. Uh, for Oracle, there's CentOS to, or to Oracle, and that's, you know, they're a bit simpler. They have Convert to RHEL, which is a relatively big product, which converts you to RHEL, and then for Rocky, you have Migrate to Rocky. So there's a few tools available. Anyway, uh, so I'm from the North Pole. I come from Sweden. I'm currently making some kombucha. I'm trying to learn piano. I tried to do some mountain biking when I was living here in Brno, but now I'm just... It's very flat where I am, so I have to go out quite a bit to get somewhere. Uh, I've been a developer for five years. Um, started at like a front-end kind of environment where I was mostly working by myself, but I learned a lot. And then uh, I think since two, three years ago, I started with Python and actually developed in commercial realm. Um, yeah, and being the team lead, it's something I'm going to transition over because it's, I can't really be a manager as well as being a team lead, but it's, yeah. And I'm also a crazy cat lady because I have some, some, some cats, right? There's uh, Isolde on the left side, and then you have Lisa on the right, both main coons. They're going to be quite big. <laughs> oh, and Mimi is a moose as well. So what are the differences between the tools? Well, first off, converting uh, like a system, why would you even want to do that, right? Like it's, you can just redeploy. And in most cases, I would say redeploy is probably the better option because when you redeploy, you get a fresh system. You're not going to have any like weird things that you didn't think of before. Like when you convert a system, like you're going to have something, even if you don't know what, you're going to have something that is still from the old system. So if you convert from CentOS to Alma, there's going to be some CentOS parts, right? But um, you're not going to have any redeployments when you're converting place. There's going to be all the configurations and files. And then when you have converted over, you know what you haven't converted with the packages, at least. So there is some security there. Um, and I would say most of the time, like, it still makes sense to redeploy. But like, the, it's, if you can't redeploy, then converting in place is the way to go. And for redeployments, it's probably the better option, right? You have um, better like safety margin if you can. Like everything, you can make sure everything is working. You can have stage migration, so like you can keep the old systems running while you're redeploying the new ones, and then after a while, you shut it off, right? And that's usually what uh, bigger companies do, right? I think Center, sorry, I think Facebook did it where they went from. RHEL to CentOS to CentOS Stream, they also had like gradual staging migrations. Oh, so the differences, I don't know, it, maybe it's going to be a bit heated, but yeah, I think ConvertRL focuses a bit more on like stability and testing. So a lot of the tools have a lot of uh, lines of code, but I think the ConvertRL is probably the biggest project out there so far. If we exclude Elevate, which is kind of Leaf, which is RHEL upgrades, but I'll get to that soon. And then Elevate. Uh, which is a play on Enterprise Linux, which is why they have EL capitalized. 
uh, they kind of treat CentOS 7 as like an upgrade path, so they disregard that it's CentOS altogether and just say, yeah, well, it's similar, so we can just upgrade it to Alma, to Rocky, to CentOS Stream, anything like that. And then Alma and Linux deploy CentOS to Oracle and migrate to Rocky. They're basically just a bash script, so they're very, they're automating the tedious parts, but there's gonna be some manual steps um, to like fix things. So, the general execution flow of like converting a system is kind of easy, right? I mentioned that before. You just have to clear the cache, you have to update the factory to the latest version to make sure that yeah, you're on the latest at least. You change the repository to the new version or a new distro by keeping the same major version. So if you're on CentOS 7 and you want to go to RHEL 7, then keep the same major version. You don't go to CentOS 7 to RHEL 8 because it, 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 it's more complexity, so it's more difficult to know what's going on. Um, and then you just replace the packages with their new distro repo counterparts, right? So if you have Apache on CentOS repos, you just reinstall that, so it's now pointing to, um, it is now the package from RHEL. And that's it. That's the, the whole process of converting. Talk over, right? But there's always edge cases, like, UEFI is one of them, where like on CentOS, uh, there are some edge cases that doesn't really work when you just try to install a new kernel and so on. You have different custom scenarios where like if you're doing something with your um, company, there might be some things there that you will have to work around. Bad packages, which is more of like, um, well, for example, CentOS, Logos is one of them, right? That's very CentOS specific, so you want to like have to try and mitigate that somehow, right? And then package dependency mismatches, etc. Um, the package dependency mismatch is probably the one, the biggest issue, I would say. Like the, there will be something, and a lot of the tools try to just like, oh well, either we just ignore it if it doesn't work, or we try to mitigate it somehow, or just like say fix it before you convert, uh, depending on the tool. So. Yeah, there's endless configurations, right? Every system is going to be unique. There's going to be packages that don't work, right? For example, model app is one of the packages that you can see on the right side that just does not work when you try to convert it from CentOS to RHEL because there's some uh, dependency things that they can't really resolve. So those things we kind of have to ignore. And then it's in general easier to convert to Alma and Rocky from CentOS than, for example, from CentOS to RHEL, because they are, I mean, there's, there's a su successor to CentOS, so they have some, like, th they're pretty much similar. I would say it's almost the same system. Um, so it just makes it easier, but RHEL actually packages their own systems and or packages, and then it makes it a bit easier to convert to Alma and Rocky. Um, and then CentOS Stream, that's like the big scary one because CentOS Stream, since it's an upstream from RHEL, there's gonna be downgrades when you go from CentOS Stream to RHEL or something else because you have so many, you have so many different downgrades. So either you just freeze it in place for a long while, which is not secure and not something you should do, um, and then you just hope for the best, but it, it's still a scary subject to like try to do it yourself. Um, and the reason for that is like that you're gonna have downgrades and they're not usually tested. So package maintainers, they usually test that upgrading a package is fine, but when it comes to downgrading, they don't usually do that. Which, in general, it's, it's not gonna cause an issue, but if, let's say, a package updates on configuration file, like a format or something, then they can't really go back to that uh, previous format. So let's delve into some more facts about how to actually do it. Yeah, as I mentioned, it's all based off of RHEL which is in turn based off, well, it's based off of CentOS Stream, which is based on Fedora, right? But almost the same thing. Packages are mostly fine when upgrading, since it's, you know, it's tested, you have um, like some security there. I don't think it's gonna be an issue if you go from CentOS to RHEL, CentOS to Alma, and I have to upgrade them because um, the version difference, it kind of works out. But the downgrades, we just don't know. We, we can never tell. Uh, it's like, okay, we have to try, see what breaks. Uh, if nothing breaks, it's probably fine. Um, <coughs> and as we mentioned, they don't usually test that uh, downgrades work. But CentOS Stream is still something that you can convert. There are some tools that allow it. Alma Linux Deploy has an option for it, where if you put in dash dash downgrade, I think, then 
you will be able to uh, convert into a stream. And then Convert to Rail is trying to do it as well, but we, since we're trying to do resilience and make sure everything is going as smoothly, it's still, it's, we have a semi-working draft um, that's been up for quite a while. But it's, it's such a big topic that we have not really um, tackled like how we should actually do it yet. Um, and then configuration migrations, they will happen. It, they can't really be reversed. Like when you have a breaking change for a, a configuration file. Yeah. You're probably gonna have to fix it manually. At least that's, that's what I believe, right? Um, or just talk to the package maintainer and see if they actually have some script that you can just reverse engineer, maybe. Uh, so bootloader is another thing that's a bit edge casey. So bootloader, if you don't know, you just have a bunch of options. It has an order to go through for the booting. And this is from my machine, so I'm running a Fedora Silver Blue or well, Kino White, which is KDE. For some reason, I see rel there, but I don't know why, uh, because it's a Fedora machine. But it's booting from Fedora. Uh, if you're trying to convert this to something else, you would change the boot order, you would change, add a new entry, and it would show a different file. And that may cause some issues in some system, as I mentioned, right? Um, secure boot is another thing you, that will not work when you convert, because secure boot wants things to stay as they are. You should not modify things, right? So you kind of have to turn that off when you're converting. Um, and then for CentOS 7, uh, there will be some edge cases if you're using UEFI, because when we're creating a new system, converting to RHEL, for example, when we're creating a new boot order, it's not really going to work because there's uh, going to be a difference with the actual, well, let me go back. In the actual uh, file path, there's going to be an issue because they, we're not going to be pointing to the, same, to the correct files. We have to fix it manually and create our own entry. And then you may be naive in thinking, OK, well, I can just LSBLK to get all the block devices, and then I see the minor like, thing there, and then it's going to be the minor number that I use. So I can just use that and do it automated. Uh, which we thought worked until we got some customer complaints that like it doesn't work. And as you can see in the lower picture, uh, you can see that it says SDI1, which is the first position of SDI, but the minor version or the minor block number is 129, which is not the like partition number. So that's getting that was actually quite difficult. Um, in the end, we managed to find with uh, this command here, BLK ID and we just get the part entry number from there, and that actually worked. And another thing that I don't think anyone on our team realized, that boot number entries, they're actually hexadecimal. So you can get something that says boot 001A, and that's just gonna break everything you just automate. It's like assuming it's all numbers, because why would you need like 9,999 9 configurations, right? I mean, it's, I don't think I've ever seen that, so. But it, they use hexadecimal, so that's why I have to like, think that's an edge case. And then with the actual tools, I mean, there's going to be more variants, right? You have the normal AMD Intel x86, which is the like, easy part. You have Arch, which is uh, getting ARM, sorry, which is getting up into like, popularity because it's usually a bit better than uh, x86 in a lot of regards. You have IBM power systems. You have different major and minor versions. And then you have different life cycles on non-minor versions and major versions, right? So you have like long-term support or extended update, upgrade uh, support, I think that was the answer, something like that. And that means even more packages to test. So if you want to like, make sure that things are good, then you have to go through. The best way to test is just convert it, right? You can just convert like a test system or like spin up a mirror and try to convert that and see if anything breaks. But um, there will be some package-specific um, architecture-specific versions for each package, unless they're using like NoArc, which works on everything. Like if they have a Python package, then as long as the system can have Python, it should work. So it's just NoArc or NoArch, maybe. And then kernel packages. I haven't looked into this, but I assume that kernel packages are going to be different on like ARM versus x86. So there, that's another thing, because packages uh, from kernel is going to be I mean, that's the most important part, right? Because when you're converting, you want to make sure that the kernel is actually from the new repository, the new distribution. So that's one of the things. And then if we want to make it more complicated, we have cloud conversions, right? So for subscription-based services like Oracle Linux or RHEL, they have like two options. 
you have bring your own subscription, BYOS, and pay G, pay as you go. And BYOS is like images that the cloud providers provide, and then pay as you go is like, well, you don't pay for the subscription right away, you pay for the usage, so it's like added on top of the hourly rate that machines have, or like the minute rate. Um, BYOS is similar, like it, it's similar to the normal conversion. It's gonna be quite easy. Everything should work as normal. There might be some subscription issues, but in general it shouldn't be. And then PayG, that one is a bit more of a difficult thing because actual cloud providers, they hook the billing to the actual machine. So when you're converting that from, from uh, Oracle over to RHEL, for example, you're gonna get double billed. Um, so you're gonna get a bill from Oracle, and you're gonna get a bill from Red Hat, which it's not ideal, and they're, the cloud providers are trying to solve that. I know uh, AWS, I think, AWS is the one. They're trying to, co to fix this somehow. And then there can also be slight differences in ISOs provided the cloud providers. I think that Google, they provide their own CentOS Linux builds because they want to pack their own, they want to introduce some, something and then AWS, they actually use security hardened images from a third party that's partnered with AWS. And without knowing like, the difference between these and like, the actual images from the official repositories, it's difficult to know whether it will pass or not, right? So you, you have to test that as well. And then you have like, normal images from like, non-enterprise Linux, like Alma, Rocky, so on. Like, all of those should be available, and you can just convert, and we kind of treat them as like a normal conversion, because that's usually the easier part. But the enterprise ones are more difficult. Oh, and actually testing the conversions. I mean, this is a big topic. Every, ver every OS, every architecture, every version is different, so it's gonna be a huge test suite of all kinds of different environments. We want to stay as close to the environment of the tool that you're trying to run. So if you're converting CentOS 7 that's using some IDM server, you kind of want to reproduce that in a test environment first and then see if it converts. Ideally, you just want to like, spin up a backup and then see, okay, can I convert? If not, then something needs to be changed, right? Um, containers, they are actually great for converting. I know that Elevate, um, Elevate is actually going into some boot management options, so container doesn't really work there uh, because they spin up an init ROM FS and kind of boot entry where it finishes the conversion in and that can, that doesn't really work with containers. Correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, but I assume it, you don't really run it in containers, right? So, yeah. so but most of the time you can use a uh, unit test with containers. That's like an easy part. But it's not a good picture. You can uh, just test the actual unit, but it's not gonna test like the whole conversion. So you have to actually use VMs or some kind of bare metal machine to try to convert. And I know that Convertorel extensively uses it, so we have a whole, um, we're using testing form to test a whole array of machines, and then we also have our own VMs. We try to use Vagrant if you want something simple. And we can spin up pretty much any of the systems that we, Convertorel can support. And then you just try to install as many packages as you can. If possible, install all of the packages that are from the written distribution from the repositories, because then you will know if there are any packages that are not gonna be converted, if there's any issues, and so on. And ideally, just clone the system, um, because otherwise it's just gonna be, it's not gonna be the, the complete mirror of what you're actually trying to convert. And make sure that you have backups. I didn't put it in here, but backups are like important, because if there's an issue and you're into production, and it's like, oh, well, my production system is down, I didn't do a backup, shit. <laughs> That, then it's kind of ruined, right? And then you have to try and fix the actual machine instead of just restoring from backup and so on. So, God, that was so fast. <laughs> but yeah, so, any questions? Because I feel like there's gonna be quite a few when it comes to converting. Yeah, that's it. Like, 
Right. So the question is, when you're converting CentOS stream to RHEL and you have to like freeze all the packages, can you just allow security patches to go through? That's basically, yeah. I'm. I don't think so. I think there's still going to be some issues with the downgrades. I mean, it's going to make the system more secure, right? Because we need some security. But when you're actually uh, um, converting the system over to, from something, there will be downgrades. And if it's if it's a security-related package, then you will have to solve it. But it depends on how much resources you have. Like, if you have enough resources that you can investigate, OK, this factor is going to be an issue. How can we mitigate that? How can we fix it? And you just create some custom scripts to like, fix that. It's fine. But there might be a lot, and that's not ideal. So it's, you have to try and see. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? All right, I think that's it. You can always reach me afterwards. Um, I'm available on Mastodon as well as on Twitter. Um, it's just spy tech, so you can find me there. And I also go by uh, Gustafsson on Red Hat. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs>